Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Museum of Fine Art, Artifacts, and Objects. My name is Temi Dio M.A., and I will be guiding you through this journey today. Now, over the course of the next hour, some of us will be sharing objects from our personal spaces, spaces we are currently occupying, and some of us will be listening and observing, and I will be asking questions. Now, today is about storytelling. It is about sharing space and recognizing that little everyday things, the stuff that populates our lives for a time, can contain meanings if we stop to appreciate them and can carry memories and they matter. Now, as we gather in this digitally singular space, I want to acknowledge the history of the lands that we collectively occupy. Solus Nua acknowledges that our organization operates our business on the unceded land of the Piscataway peoples. We acknowledge the Piscataway as the original caretakers of this land. We pay our respects to the Piscataway community and their elders, both past and present, as well as future generations. And as quoted from the American Blues Theater and inspired by the work of producer and artist, Adrian Wong, I offer this land acknowledgement to our digital space as well. We gather today in an effort to create art in a new digital format using equipment and high-speed internet not available in many indigenous communities. This technology, which has now become central to our lives, leaves a significant footprint and contributes to changing climates that disproportionately affect indigenous people. Although we are here together, digitally, virtually, separated by distance in geographical locations all over the world, collectively, we all sit on indigenous land, land once occupied and inhabited by hundreds of native tribes, land stolen from these indigenous people by European settlers. The genocide and forced removal of indigenous peoples from these lands is a history that must be acknowledged. And the current struggles of indigenous people must be brought to the forefront so that their plight is never forgotten. Now, whether the land you sit on right now is yours or someone else's, it needs to be acknowledged and thanked for what it gives to us every single day. So I'd like to take a moment in stillness and in silence to acknowledge and to thank the land. Now in this space, as we are gathering together in this moment here and now, I would like us to take a few deep breaths together to recenter and refocus our energy as we embark on a new and exciting endeavor. So from wherever you are, I'd like you to close your eyes if you feel. Meet me at the bottom of your next exhale and take a deep breath in and out. We'll do that twice more, taking a deep breath in and out. Last time, inhale deeply and exhale completely. And as you continue to breathe, remember that we are here, our ancestors are here, and the future generations are already here as well. I want to recognize that so much of our history, the history that we pass on to each other, is held within the very objects that we have around us that may outlive us and some of them that we may outlive. And these objects, these artifacts, characterize and document our lives. And we are gathering today 
we are gathering these domestic objects in our digital museum. This museum is temporary, temporary. Unlike other museums, we are not plundering into your homes, although I'd very much like to just you know, lightly borrow what I'd like from your home. This collection, however, the collection we are creating here today, won't ever be physically together in space. And when this museum closes in about an hour, they will never be displayed together again. So what we are creating here and now with each other in this moment is incredibly special. And I invite you to take another look into your space, into the physical space that you are currently in. Take a look around. What do you see? And out loud, wherever you are, whether you're surrounded by other people, whether you're alone in the space, whether you have your cat or your dog next to you, I'd like you to name four things that you see out loud. Cardboard boxes, a broken plate, a money tree, a paper garland, Keep looking at your space, where you are, and name out loud four things that you, three things that you are touching or that you can touch. I am touching the floor, this chair, my hands together. Name two things that you can hear I can hear the sound of my own voice and the hum of my refrigerator. And last, name one thing that you love. And I love everything that's happening right now. Now, as I said, over the next hour, we'll be moving between our personal spaces and this digital space that we are creating together, this museum. We'll be adding our everyday objects to this museum as we go along. Now, I, I wanna be, I'll be honest for a second. This next hour, truly, truly, is about my nosiness. It's a personal, personal, personal appreciation for my nosiness because I love to see, you know, in the middle of a Zoom call or on a video chat, peeking around somebody's shoulder in that box that we're all living in currently and just seeing what's in your home, what do you have there? And so today we'll be glimpsing into each other's homes online uh, via the artifacts and objects that we are collecting. And I know we've all been taking a look at each other's homes over each other's shoulders over the past few months. So I personally want to know more about your stuff. And this is a great, great museum that we are creating to do just that. Now we'll begin at the museum, this Museum of Art, Artifacts and Objects, or the MAAO in short, with a personal favorite of mine, introducing to you <laughs> Topanga. Now, Topanga came to me um, somewhere between 2011 and 2012. She is half cat, half rabbit, as you can see, blue with her um, lace doily-esque collar. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. She looks absolutely gorgeous and you'd be right. Um, I got Topanga at a thrift store with my uh, best friend at the time, her name was Caroline, um, and she and I were walking around the thrift store because she was going off to college um, and I was just finishing up my first year and this was the furthest we were going to be apart from each other and so we wanted to have a way to essentially communicate with each other over the distance that we were sharing in a way that was different than being on the phone. And so we came up with this idea, I know many of you have seen or have heard of the sisterhood of the traveling pants. And we decided to create the sibling hood of the traveling Christmas sweaters and Topanga. <laughs> and so while we were both in school, we would have Topanga wherever we went. 
Uh, we would take pictures with her um, in the places that we went to and tag each other in those photos, whether on Facebook or whatever, um, so that we could see into each other's lives that way. Um, and then when our time was up, boxing all our sweaters and Topanga, and we'd send each other um, the package. And I forgot about Topanga for a long time after college. And then um, she kind of made her way back into my life when I realized like she and I have been on a lot of adventures together. Um, and so I'm really grateful, I'm really grateful to have her. And so this Topanga will stay in our digital museum. Uh, I see it, I see it, <laughs> I appreciate it. And I thank you Topanga, thank you. And now I would like to introduce and welcome our first expert at this Museum of Art, Artifacts and Objects. Please welcome Elizabeth Wallace. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Elizabeth. How are you doing today? Okay, thank you. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely, are you excited? How are you feeling? Scared, nervous, but it'll, this too shall pass. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I'll, I'll be, I'll promise to take good care of you. Okay, great. Um, and so if you would, for everyone watching, um, give us your full name uh, and your pronouns if you're sharing. Um, Elizabeth Forbes Wallace, um, she, her. Awesome, thank you. Uh, and now the name of your object. <laughs> you know what? Um, I never gave it a name. <laughs> And it, and so it's, um, I actually don't name a lot of artwork of my own, but this is my daughter's artwork and I, we'd have to ask her. Oh, it's and wonderful. So, yes. Well, please tell us everything about it. Um, well, about 30 years ago when my daughter Alexis was about eight years old uh, and my son Justin was just a toddler, uh, she came home from school and she was like really upset because her art teacher had rejected her drawing of mountains, oh, which, no. which, which was not this one. But so I was pretty upset and I felt that said a lot more about the teacher than it did about my daughter. Okay. <laughs> a lot. But um, later that night we got into my, uh, we got into my big four poster bed, got us against the pillows and I got this big, huge travel book that was put out by a tour company. And we snuggled up against the pillows and we started looking through it for pictures of mountains. Mm. So I turned to the pages that I prefer because I really want to go to Bhutan someday. Mm. So we went to the Himalayas, Himalayas section of the book. Um, and I was looking at the pictures and I thought, it's going to be hard to draw mountains. <laughs> These are, it's really difficult. They're not like that distinct. And so I never even gone to Appala the Appalachian Mountains with her. So how was she to know what they mm -hmm. looked like? Mm -hmm. So I shared with her I always wanted to go there. We read the district descriptions of the tours. Um, there was the ones on Nepal talk about how you trek up the mountains and you're supported by Sherpas to get mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so she says, Mom, what's a Sherpa? And I said, well, there are people from Nepal, in this case, this was in Nepal, uh, who help you carry what you need for the trip, but you can't do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and a whole lot more than mm -hmm. that. And she said, I'd like to go. Do they have McDonald's there? <laughs> and I said, I don't think so. <laughs> Not yet <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, then now maybe they do. But, um, and then does it, she said, well, do they have Prego spaghetti? And I said, I don't think so. She goes, do they have any spaghetti and frozen boxes we could take? And I said, well, now you know what our family menu was like, <laughs> our refrigerator, right? <laughs> and so I said, Alexis, I, we wouldn't have a way to cook it, <laughs> you know? And she said, she paused and she thought, could the Sherpas carry our microwave? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, I know, this is one of these major, <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Mom had a lot to teach. Um, but anyway, our talk must have made an impression on her because a few days later, she came home with 
from school with this beautiful, I think, block print of the Himalayas in full purple mountain majesty. Oh, it's purple. And, um, I think they're perfect. Truly, really and truly. And you said she was in uh, which eight, grade when she, she made was this? Eight years old. She was eight years old? Yeah. Oh, so she was like yeah. third grade, maybe second grade, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Um, and so now, how long has this been hanging in your home? Well, since then, uh, like 32 years. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Okay, so your daughter's not like 16. No, she's 40 now. Oh, she's 40! No, she's probably older than, yeah, she's 40. But what was cool today is when I shared about this event with my son, he's here in, in D.C., but she's she's in another time zone, unfortunately. Mm. Um, there are two pictures of my house I'd grab off the walls if it if there were a fire. And one, they're both over the fireplace, and one is my son did about the same age as Alexis was, and, and this one. And um, and today I told him about the event, and he texted he was sorry he couldn't make it, but he texted me something I never knew, so mm. thank you for this opportunity to find this out. He texted, that picture is etched into my brain from very young. Mm, you made me cry. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Uh, and so you just got this message today. Today, yeah, just right before wow. we got on. Yeah. Oh, and how are you feeling having received that? Well, I cried too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I felt like if the parse goes on fire, we'll all three be reaching for the Himalayas. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it made me very happy to know something so special that we probably all have memories like that or things we know about ourselves that you don't think are important or not. We don't share them. And this thanks for this opportunity for me to learn to learn that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then do you see this every single day? Yeah, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And do you find yourself really taking it in every time you see it? I'm not sure if I take it in, but I, I don't know what you mean. I just feel very calm when I look at it. Mm. I just um, am happy that she moved through her own challenge at, with that teacher and that expression of herself mm -hmm. in a way that's so... Uh, long lasting, you know. Absolutely. And so, did she get her love for art from you? Oh, I. <laughs> uh, I, I. I don't know. <laughs> Where do your kids get anything? <laughs> <laughs> the internet these days. <laughs> yeah. No. I. I hope there's some of it from me, but. Um, but I. I couldn't take full credit. Mm -hmm. There's so many other people in her life. There's a photography teacher she had in high school that was really really uh so another teacher that was good <laughs> in her life much later who really really um uh supported her during her photography years so yeah mm -hmm. that's fantastic thank you so so much for sharing this story about it and so you know while we're waiting on the name from your daughter if you could name it what would you name it um I, I I don't know. I guess I might have said it. Uh, well, it's either Hima Himalaya, Himal Himala Himalayas. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a, I kind of rethought this whole story what, because of what you shared at the beginning. Mm. Because I know, like, there's so much destruction going on around around, in, around uh, uh, Mount Everest, Kilima you know, and and the place has been trashed by tourists in a lot of way, Bhutan, not so much, but mm -hmm. Nepal has, and it kind of speaks to what you were talking about earlier, you know, in your introduction. Mm -hmm. And um, what I learned today before this was that it's named after Mount, a, a, guy, a gentleman named Everest, but you pronounce it Everest. Mm -hmm. And he was actually in charge of the survey, which I just finished reading a book about the, the survey of the Himalayas coincidentally, and um, he didn't want it to be named after him. Mm. So there's a lot of things that happened that uh, there's all a lot of sub stories and everything. Yeah, but, absolutely. But it really made me, what you shared about really made me think that um, 
how the story could be told differently. Anyway, thank you. Sure. Absolutely, thank you. So this object, your object, has been submitted to our museum. We see it, we appreciate it, and I thank you so much for sharing, Elizabeth. Oh, thank you, thank you for being there today, and everybody, Absolutely. thank you. Okay, museum goers watching along, take another look into your home, into the room that you are in. What would you say in this room is the most valuable thing that you see? And if it's not in this room, what would you say is the most valuable thing in your home or where you're staying? Take a moment to see it, whether physically or in your imagination, and name it out loud. I would say the most valuable thing in my home. Oh, honestly, it might be my water bottle. <laughs> um, in what way in the item that you've chosen, in what way is it valuable? Is it valuable because of the cost, because of the story behind it, the history, the length of time you've had it? Um, is it valuable because it's one of a kind, because it's irreplaceable? And what do you suppose will happen to this item after you're gone? Now, as you're viewing, I'll be asking you throughout to share your items, thoughts, and feelings in the comments. And this is the great opportunity to begin that. So well, from wherever you're viewing, feel free to comment below on your most valuable item. Now these comments don't have to be profound. They don't have to be much of anything. If they don't want to be, they can be as long and lengthy and fabulous as you choose. But I personally want to hear as many stories as possible. So please comment below. And those comments will be feeding live into our stream so I can see them. You know, uh, as we're waiting for people to comment, I'll just say, I think the reason I chose my water bottle is because uh, it reminds me to stay hydrated. Uh, oftentimes I recognize like, um, you know, we talk about like hunger and what it does to the mind um, and to the body. But we don't necessarily talk about thirst. Um, and I find myself more often, especially because I'm not uh, carrying my water bottle around everywhere, like, when was the last time I actually had some water? Um, and because we're wearing masks or we're, you know, keeping ourselves covered, um, it's not so easily in the mind to to hydrate. And so for me, it's incredibly important um, the water within this bottle and the bottle itself to remind me to stay hydrated. Um, and water is just an incredibly valuable resource that we have on this planet. Um, fresh water, and I know that uh, I am incredibly grateful to have access to fresh water every single day. Now, feel free to continue to comment um, as we continue forward, and I will be introducing our next expert. Please welcome Melinda Daugherty. Hello from Oklahoma City. Okay, see what you heard. Hi, Melinda. How are you today? I'm feeling fast and free. How are you? Well, uh, it's rather chilly here. We had a snow this morning. It was beautiful. Oh, we love the snow this morning. Okay. <laughs> so please, uh, for everyone viewing, please share with us your name once again and your pronouns as well. Melinda Darty, she and her. Wonderful, thank you so much, Melinda. And now please tell us the name of your object. Well, Ooh. this little shoe, which you can see on the, uh, the bottom of the quilt, I put it there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And that's what started all of this. Uh -huh. this this and I see you're holding the shoe as well. Right. Mm -hmm. This started out, I was thinking, I surely have something important to share. <laughs> and my granddaughter, my very first granddaughter was just born. 
And this will go to her. It was my great grandmother's. Oh my goodness. Yes. And, you know, I remember when my mother had it and it was guarded as precious, you know, be careful because it is China. It breaks. Mm. Um, and it has potpourri in it, I guess, to keep the stinky shoes from smelling. <laughs> Okay. So this is a shoe made of glass? It's China. Okay. And so for those of us who don't know what that means, what is China? Uh, I mean, China and crystal. Uh -huh. So it's crystal. No, it's China. Oh, see, I don't know, but this is very exciting. I'm learning something very new here. Okay, and so you said you've had this, or at least your great-grandmother had this as well. My great-grandmother on my mother's side. And how did it come to you? Through my mother. Mm -hmm. It was passed down because my mother was the oldest granddaughter mm -hmm. of her generation, and I am the oldest granddaughter of my generation. Uh, and, uh, yes. and it will go to my granddaughter, Fiona, she just was born December the 4th. No, like like, uh, like nine days ago? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was very special. And then that led me to look around and I thought, oh, my quilts. Yes. That's really what caught my attention. I was like, there's so much happening in this photo. There's so I know. <laughs> yeah. uh, the brown one. Mm -hmm is from my father's grandmother. So my great grandmother, she came over from Sweden and that fabric is from Sweden. Mm -hmm. okay. and, it, and it was entered into a quilt show and it received honorable mention. Yeah. I, I think that was like, like in 1980 something or other. Oh, so just yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, several years ago. <laughs> yeah, and they commented about the stitching is perfecting. I mean, it's tiny little stitches. It's all hand quilted. Of course. And uh, yeah, it's just phenomenal. Absolutely. And so then the other quilt yeah. is, is bow ties. And again, it is from my mother's side, uh, the grandmother that the shoe belonged to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He is the one that quilted that one. Mm -hmm. ties. And uh, you, you can't see, Yes. but it has a green background. I think uh, I spilled some bleach on it and it kind of bleached the dark green. Out. Yes, How many times have I accidentally spilled bleach? In the wash. <laughs> and uh, so if I can ask you about this shoe, um, what, why is the shoe valuable to you? Just because it was my great grandmother's something that I can have and hold. Mm -hmm. My, my fam family is so important to me mm -hmm. and it's just a treasure. Absolutely. It's nothing to play with. You know, it's got a little, you know, it, it has China painted mm -hmm. on, uh, and it's got the little bow and the purple flowers, delicate, very much. Yes. And, but it just represents my family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I'm so excited for, you said her name is Fiona? My granddaughter. Mm-hmm. Fiona. I'm so excited for her to meet this shoe. Yeah, I can't wait to make a holder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so she's not with you. Oh, of course. No, she you? lives up in Silver Springs. Uh-huh. Okay, yes. Oh, this Rex, is so Rex's sister had the baby. Oh, okay. And it's all making sense now. Yeah. Um, Rex the director. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Oh, there's so much. <laughs> so in addition to this incredible shoe, um, is there anything else uh, from this image that you would like to uh, well, the, donate to our museum today? The third quilt. Yes. I 
uh, my mother found the pieces. They were, and she said, what is this? And I looked at it and I said, oh, remember whenever Grandma Thrasher would have ladies aid meeting and she had the table spread, the quilting table? Yes. And to give me something to do when I was small. Mm -hmm. She gave me the scraps of fabric from her aprons. Genius. And that is what I cut out. And my mother said, oh, I think I can put this together. Oh, but yes. I won't. But she said, if you want it hand quilted, it probably won't get done. And my mother put it together and she zigzagged it. Mm -hmm. and that is the quilt, the sunbonnet quilt. That's incredible. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Melinda. All of these objects have been submitted to our museum. We see them, we appreciate them all. And thank you so much for sharing. My pleasure. It was so, I was so honored. Truly, truly. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, this is amazing. This is truly amazing. Okay, everyone. It's time once again to take a moment from your device and tune back into the space that you're in. Can you see anything in this space that you're currently in that was given to you? Maybe as a gift from another person, maybe as a gift from yourself, as an heirloom, as we just witnessed, or a memento. Take a moment to look at this item, this item that was given to you and speak its name out loud. Money tree. Was this item good to receive? How did you feel when you received it? Does it matter to you now? And what do you suppose will happen to this item after you're gone? And if you'd like to respond in the comments, please do. Thank you all so much for continuing to respond in the comments. A little bit about this money tree while I'm waiting. Um, this is the money tree. I got it on my birthday uh, two months ago. Um, I wasn't expecting anything because quarantine. Um, and my friend pulled up to take me to brunch and this was sitting in the passenger seat of her car. And I looked at it and I was like, is this for me? And she was like, yeah. And I almost cried <laughs> because I love gifts, especially gifts that are still alive, um, only to be followed up by gifts that are edible. Um, and she gave me this tree and I really, really appreciate how thoughtful she was in um, sharing this with me because she knows how much I love houseplants um, and taking care of living things. Some of the comments from our previous prompt um, in terms of things that are most valuable to us. We have Dennis's grandmother's clock, Sue's Celtic bronze handbell, Ooh, it's, mm, and Jacob's come from away coffee table book. I can only imagine the stories behind <laughs> those items as well. We see these items and we thank you for giving them as they are added to our museum. Thank you so much. And we continue on. To our third expert, please help me welcome Kevin Murphy. Hello, folks. Hi, Kevin. Hi, hello. How you doing, how you doing? Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Kevin Murphy. Mm -hmm. You're sitting in my home office. Wonderful. Uh, pronouns are he and him. He and him. And Kevin, are you in the D.C. metro area? Yes, I'm in Greenbelt, Maryland. Which is oh, right right the corner. Yeah. Oh, where are you? Yeah. I am in um, Mount Rainier, Hyattsville. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, you're, maybe we'll, you know, have a... I will run into you at Franklin's <laughs> Pub on occasion. Yes. Oh, listen. Yes. That's a date. Um, yes. So please tell me about your object. Well, I never, I'd not given it a name before this presentation, but uh, mm -hmm. I decided to call it when I responded to Rex. I called it Snapshot 1981. Oh, this is a photo. 
This is a photo. Oh. Uh, this Tell is a photo. Us everything. I took this photo on my first trip to Ireland back in the early 80s. I was in my 20s, and it was my first tri trip to Ireland, but it was also my first trip outside of North America. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was all very exciting. I was traveling uh, by myself. So, you know, it, it was just a sense of being sort of wide open uh, to all these new images and, and experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had my camera with me. That was my, uh, my partner on the trip uh, and took all kinds of photos. Uh, this one struck me and has stayed with me. So I printed it in a five by seven print and put it in a frame and it's been on one wall or another ever since. Mm -hmm. Um, can you tell me what's in the photo? I see a bunch of different items within it as well. Yeah, this was, I took this photo, it, this was in Dublin. Mm -hmm. And I was just wandering the streets, more or less aimlessly, looking at things. And, and came upon a small crowd of people watching this person uh, do a chalk portrait. No. And I That's could see... Chalk. That's in chalk. And yes, that was one of the things that amazed me. Uh, uh, you know, this beautiful portrait and, and sort of the depth that he was able to accomplish in the face is, is just amazing to me when it's out of chalk and on a, in a medium on a sidewalk that clearly is not in the best shape in the world. But right. you know, he tackled this. I watched this for a few minutes mm -hmm. and then I went on my way and I thought, well, I should go back and see what the finished product looks like. Mm. Uh, and I went back, but, you know, several hours had passed in Dublin being Dublin. It had rained mm. and mm. there was nothing there anymore. Oh. So and I thought, you know, who, you know, why, you know, why do this mm -hmm. on a thing when, when you're not even sure you'll be able to finish it? It won't linger very long. Mm -hmm. And yet clearly it had such a you know, such attentiveness and skill in the production of this. Truly, truly. I I thought, so I put that on my wall because it's a reminder to me of just first, you know, of the whole trip itself. Really? And that feeling of, of you know, being the first time in a new situation and all the attentiveness and openness you have to have to accepting and interpreting everything that's coming your way. But True. also just because I, I, I sort of admired whoever this person was mm. who had the discipline and skill to do this, but also kind of the defiance of the transience of it all, mm -hmm. uh, that it was just going to be something that under the best of circumstances uh, would sort of not last long, but I assume he meant he, he had hoped that it would linger in the mind's eye of some bystanders and pedestrians going by. So I thought, well, taking the photo of it, and now I've given it, I'm sure, much more life than he ever anticipated by mm. hanging it on my wall for 40 years and then talking about it with you. Yeah. And, and others along the way in the inter intervening four years. That's incredible. So you've had this for 40 years. Yes. Wow. So then do you think when you took this photo, did you anticipate that it would have a life this long? Um. I can't say that I did, no. I mean, I, 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 I liked it from the beginning. Uh, there was something, you know, just dramatic to me about the fact that it was both beautiful in an environment that would hardly be considered a beautiful environment, but also unfinished. Mm -hmm. um, Incredible. And uh, so it's, it's something I think about. I, I sort of, uh, at various moments, you asked someone earlier if they think about it every day. I can't say I think about it every day, but I see it almost every day. Mm -hmm. It's just a very quick reminder of both the transience of the things we do, but also it doesn't mean you don't stay committed to them and hope that it has an impact. Truly, absolutely. Yeah. I 100% agree. Mm -hmm. um, and so do you think this object has become more valuable to you the longer you've had it? Um, yes. Yes. And why? Um, well, because I think it kind of sums up to me, kind of, it, 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 it represents kind of how we can approach uh, whatever skills, 
and situation we have in which we're operating. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily large scale, sometimes very small scale. Mm -hmm. But we still sort of try to approach it with some diligence. You know, some sense of persistence and perspective. And, you know, not worry too much about the potential transience of it. Absolutely. Um, Wow. So it's kind of a lesson to me that I keep learning from as I watch this photo and look at it on occasion. And have you been able to return to this part of Dublin? Um, yes. I mean, I don't know exactly which sidewalk this is. Sure, but, sure. But, uh, yeah, my wife and I and my family and I have been to Dublin, you know, uh, two or three times. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Um the uh, and of course I've watched you know seen a bunch of the changes that have occurred in that city between 1981 and 2014 or 12 whenever the last time was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've not seen street artists though mm. uh, doing chalk portraits on a sidewalk, whether I just there at the wrong time or not, or or if this was a fashion at that particular time. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so if you could repeat the name of this object one more time so we can all hear it. Well, I just call it a snapshot from 1981. A snapshot from 1981. Incredible. Mm. Your object, this snapshot, has been submitted to the museum. We see it. Thank we you. appreciate it. And I thank you so much, Kevin, for sharing. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, museum goers, you know what to do. Take a look around you. Look away from the screen. Just listen to my voice. Is there anything in your room or in your home, more generally, the space that you're occupying right now, that your relationship to has changed in the past nine months? Maybe you've seen more of it. The more time you've spent in your home. Maybe you use it differently now because of everything that's happened. See that object and speak that object's name out loud. And of course, as always, if you'd like to respond in the comments, I welcome them. Some of our responses, as you all are naming these objects and filling our comments are from our previous prompt are Elizabeth's tiny ivory carved monkey, perhaps from China, a gift from her grandmother. Rex's tenor ukulele, a gift from his sister. Brit's poster of Elena de Laudane and Christy Tolliver from when Mystics won the WNBA championship last year. Go Mystics. Sue's heart-shaped plaque engraved to Sue the foxiest voice on radio. <laughs> and a gift from four Navy sailors who listened to her when she was a radio DJ. We see these items, we appreciate these items, and they have now been brought into our museum. Thank you so much. Again, please continue to make your way into the comments and we'll circle back to them after our fourth expert. Please welcome Britt Willis. Hi, Britt. Hi. How are you, my sweet? I'm doing all right. It's nice to see you. How are you doing? Good, good. I'm really, I'm just, my heart is so full. <laughs> so many stories, so much history. Um, if you wouldn't mind sharing with us your full name and your pronouns. Yes, uh, my full name is Britt A. Willis. My pronouns are they, them. Wonderful. Thank you, Britt. And now the name of your object. Um, so I have it here as well. It's a water bottle. <laughs> we were definitely on the same page here. Um, I named it New Habits. Okay. Um, it's it's a re a recent acquisition. Uh, it's a 2020 um, <laughs> acquisition for the museum. Um, and I actually I picked it because I 
So I, I was trying to think, um, I know the piece is what's on your walls and I actually have a lot of art on my wall, um, but it's on this wall uh, mm -hmm. behind my computer so I can look at it because I'm very selfish about <laughs> the art on my wall and we'll look at it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so people don't see it that often. And I was trying to think of something um, people see a lot when I'm in video calls mm. and um, we have been in some video calls together and I don't yeah. know if you've seen this water bottle, but it makes a, an appearance in most of my video calls. Yes. <laughs> I think I might've seen it probably in, you know, in our TW um, summit meeting. Yeah, probably. So I figured this was, this was the, um, the right thing because people see it probably uh, the most in my video calls. Um, yeah. So you've named this bottle new habits. Tell me yeah. about that. Yeah. So I, um, I have, uh, learned a lot about myself in the last couple of years and also specifically this year, mm -hmm. um, a few things like, um, discovering that I am living with two chronic illnesses and have some other health concerns, um, that is basically meant that I have to take medicine in the morning and at night. Um, and I have to take a full glass of water um, with each. Mm -hmm. And um, I also have been not great at listening to what my body needs. Um, I tend to I have to fight that like productivity instinct. So that's like, no, 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 no. I want to work, 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 work. Mm -hmm. um, so I got this water bottle. Um, I did a lot of research because I don't buy things without reading a hundred reviews. <laughs> um, it is 32 ounces of water. Yes. Uh, yes. Which means I can drink like two of these and feel pretty hydrated every day. Um, and it means I can drink like half of it. And I know I've drank a full glass of water for my medicine, um, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has great like touch feel. I don't know how to describe it, but I can't, I don't know if you can tell, but there's texture to it. Mm -hmm. um, so it never feels slippery or anything. I like the way it feels in my hand. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is kind of gross, but like it starts, it starts tasting bad, the cap, if I don't clean it regularly, which mm -hmm. is actually good because it means that I clean it more regularly than I probably would um, if I didn't feel like I had to. Um, so yeah, it's, it's new habits because it's helping me make sure that I do the things my body needs, um, including hydrating and taking my medicine on time. Amen to yeah. that. Okay. So when was the last time <laughs> you engaged with this object? Uh, I have drink from this water bottle multiple times since you started streaming. <laughs> so, 45 seconds ago. I couldn't even tell you how many times I've drank from it in the last like 50 minutes. That's fantastic. I love it. Okay. So you're interacting with this, I mean, dozens, if not like a hundred times a day. Absolutely. And, and I think even more when I'm on video calls, I don't know what it is, but it feels like I get more thirsty when I'm like well, on video calls too, you know? So yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it, it gets used quite a bit. Um, the only downside is I have one of those Brita filter pitchers, um, which is actually about, I think it holds about as much water as this water bottle, which means literally every time I fill my water bottle, I have to stand at the sink and fill <laughs> my Brita pitcher. Absolutely. I know that struggle. I know it very well. I have one of those, um, um, they're like this big, mm -hmm. um, so that I, because I too like to drink amazing amounts of water like this is the tiniest water bottle i have my my water bottles can get, be a little obnoxious in size which i personally love because then i know once i've drank it all like you said i know oh i am hydrated <laughs> Absolutely. Down. um and so over the course of this pandemic um how has your relationship changed um or grown or shifted with this with this new habits yeah. Um, when I started, I, I think I definitely was in this, um, it's not fair mindset, <laughs> you know, um, the, this mindset of like, this is a thing I have to do and I hate it. And I just wish this wasn't the way things were. Mm. Um, and I think something that I have been able to embrace more, um, because of habits like this 
is the fact that my chronic illnesses, my disability actually uh, empowers me in, in ways. Um, it's not something that I have to think of just as a loss, even when it is frustrating. Like I'm not happy with my body all the time because of these things. Mm -hmm. um, even when it is frustrating, it empowers me in other ways. And, and one of those ways is that I pay more attention to what it needs now and that I have boundaries for myself now to, um, you know, keep myself as healthy as I can be. Um, and yeah, so I think in, in some ways my mindset has changed from like, just that, why is this happening to me? It's not fair kind mm -hmm. of mindset into, uh, what I like to call, um, and I'm sure I picked this up from somewhere, someone else. So I don't want to <laughs> say that it's mine, but, uh, more of a, I, I call myself a chronic fighter um, kind of mindset, and um, yeah, it's it's a it's a better mindset for sure for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, same. You know, I like I definitely felt, especially I think the most difficult habit for me uh, at the top of this quarantine was uh, uh, like wiping down or spraying down all of my groceries and everything I bring into the home before. Um, mm -hmm. putting it into my kitchen and I like to wash all of my produce so then I was wiping them all down letting them dry and then washing them all before actually like consuming any of it and that became <laughs> such a test <laughs> of patience um, but now it's like I have the system and it's just ch -ch -ch, and it's just like it it flows so much more easily now um, so I can definitely agree that this pandemic has taught me a lot about <laughs> patience and um finding the ways to, to live with the habit and not hate it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so thank you. Thank you to you and to New Habits. This object has been submitted to our museum. <laughs> we see it. We appreciate it. And I thank you so much for sharing, Britt. Thank you. We'll see ya. All right, friends. I know you think you know, but you don't know. Imagine this, close your eyes. We're not going into our physical spaces, we're going into our imaginary. Imagine this, you have to pack tonight your suitcase and leave in a hurry. As people today and throughout history have had to do and are continuing to do, what are you taking with you? Take a moment in your mind to pack that suitcase. What can you not leave behind? And as you see these items, as they pop into your imaginary suitcase, speak their names out loud and comment them if you so choose below. As you do this, I'll share with, with you some comments from our previous prompt. In our changed relationship to the objects around us, we have Dennis's big screen TV listen the amount of TV I've watched over the course of the last ten, nine months. Elizabeth's map of the world with over 100 pins from all of her Airbnb guests who no longer can visit. A moment of silence for all the travel that we wanted to do this year that we will do in the future. Mm. Rex's desk, which he has used for 10 years and this year and he discovered that it has a drawer. Congratulations. More space to put more objects, artifacts, and art. Things that you may absolutely need. Things that are completely unnecessary and all in between. That is so exciting. Continue to respond with any of the prompts. And specifically with our last prompt, which are things that you would absolutely pack if you had to go right now. And as you do this, I will invite our final expert of our sharing today at the Museum of Art, Artifacts, and Objects. Please welcome Neve Diorio. Hi, Tamadeo. How are you? Hi, Neve. Am I saying your name correctly? Yes, you are. You got it right. Amazing. All right. So please share your name once more and your pronouns, if you please. Sure. Neve Diorio and I'm in Great Falls and she and her. She and her. And I'm am I hearing a little bit of 
and Irish. Uh, you are, yes, yes. So I'm from Dublin originally, living now in Great Falls with my American husband and family and uh, loving it. I became a citizen this year. Congratulations! Yep, so it was a big year and uh, yeah, it's um, it's a big year for, for calling here home and not calling Ireland home, you know? That's right. I used, used to always call Ireland going home, but um, you know, it's, it's like everything. When your parents pass on, you kind of, um, you feel like your house isn't your home anymore. And with my parents gone now, we just sold our home at mm -hmm. home, right in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And that is the home that my mother grew up in with her family and where I grew up also and where what we're going to look at now, where the, where the great Murray grew up also. And um, just, it was very fitting that uh, when, when you said, what's on your walls? We have this photograph of the great Murray hanging in our dining room. I moved it in here into my room now for you to look at. But um, it, it hangs in our dining room um, to try and, and keep that part of my family alive in my kids' minds, you know, because I think when I was growing up, we had, uh, we had this amazing vision of what my mother's family was, mm -hmm. right? So we, we grew up in her house, mm -hmm. but the stories that we heard it was like reliving a movie because when you walk the halls and sleep in the same rooms as the whole family, mm -hmm. you get to really understand what my mother was talking about. You know, so, so the great Murray was my uncle. So my mother had, um, she had two sisters and, th and four brothers. So my mother, if you look closely in that, I don't know if you can see that any closer, but my mother was an identical twin. And um, she um, is like, she is a uh, second from the right. No, there's two, the girls that are on the oh, outside oh, are the yeah. identical oh, twins, yeah. all right? Uh -huh. so, and so they were um, part of the act also. So he would, make one disappear and then the other one would walk in from the back of the room you know so so the trick was given away no and also he used to um he used to do like the illusions and mind reading and yes. and um one of this book that i have a picture there i have it right here in front of me oh my goodness this, book. this is a really really old book and yeah. it's called the complete book of fortunes so what he loved was, um, he loved to explore what was outside of the five senses. So yes. he, would, he, would, he would delve deeply into that. And so my mother was very like that too. Mm -hmm. She was very um, intuitive and you know, very much into having you use your own talents and thrifts to be successful, right? So in her family, there was a, a musician, a magician, mm -hmm. um, a priest, and a writer. So, and then there was the girls who, who were the twins who were idolized because they were identical twins all the way up until they died. And everybody thought, you know, there was a great novelty to it. And then the older sister was like a movie star. So everybody knew the Murrays in in Crumlin, where, where I'm from, right? And, uh, and, and there was a, I don't know, there was a certain mystery there to us as children as to, you know, why weren't they being revered the world over? Because we thought they were all famous, right? Yes. So, so um, but there was great stories. My mother used to say, uh, May, who was his wife, so the great Murray, that was Tommy, his wife was May, who was his girlfriend first. Um, my mother was about probably eight years younger than him. And he would ride his bicycle home from, from the, the shows that he would do. And he would have the two white rabbits in his front basket. 
and he'd have May on the crossbar and he would ride home and then he they would hear him like really, really late midnight, open the front door with the key and throw the two rabbits into the hall oh, and then close the door and ride May home on the bike. So they would hear the rabbits flopping around in the lino in the hall, right? The linoleum. <laughs> So she has all these memories and we grew up with that. So I try and share with my kids the art of, you know, I would love for them to share their talents. Like back then, everybody shared their talents. Now everybody's having a hard time having the art of conversation even, you know. Although when, when Joe, my husband said, when, when I said we have three minutes to talk here, he said, God, are they all Irish? That's not enough time. <laughs> it's like, you know, because, you know, three minutes is nothing. But today it's really hard to get the kids to talk for three minutes. You know, it's, it's, uh, I thank you for bringing back the art conversation, though. So that's good, right? A great art to have. It's one yeah. that you can play with you everywhere you go. Right. I know. It's just, um, and everybody, I think, if they, if they accepted everybody as, who they are and not try and prejudge them by what they see about them on the telephone. I think try and get to know them first, pick up the phone and talk to them and don't judge them by what you see, right? I think that the whole, there's a whole thing missing there. Yeah, and I, I, you know, and I think about the ways in which we have been working ourselves towards something like Instagram or something like Facebook or even TikTok, you know, being, seeing things like a picture of the great Marais on your wall and knowing that there are stories behind it. I, I, we live in a world where we often get to build our stories um, on our posts so that you get you know, the story that I'm willing to share about the picture that I'm showing you. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, even as we're sharing these images online um, and in person, what the story is behind, it may be the story that you don't necessarily want to share about the image that you're looking at, or the story that's a little less, a little more embarrassing or a little bit more vulnerable or um, has a longer history. Uh, I know we live in a world where there's a lot of, um, there are many ways that people have now chosen to tell stories um, beyond you know, having a conversation about them. So I'm just, I'm fascinated as to how this will influence history the same way, you know, the great Marais and your family have been able to influence your history and therefore the history of everybody around you. I think there's so much juice and fodder there. Um, and so, I, you know, when I, you know, 50 years from now, we'll see <laughs> when, when everyone's um, in the middle age and talking to their families, you know, talking about, you know, back in my day when we were on TikTok and now you all have holographic or whatever it is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But I also noticed, you know, when you, we're not printing as much anymore. We're not printing photographs as much. They're all kept in our phone. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of staging going on with the kids. Like I looked at, I have photographs here of, um, of Tommy that are, I look at this one. If you can see this, I don't know if you can see that, but this is, this is um this is tommy going down um he's being blindfolded by the the president of of ireland eamon de valera and he was doing um he was doing a charity event for the red cross and with that he was driving a boat blindfolded down the river liffey turning around and coming back and they had the president there blindfolding him that's one thing and then I have this other one where he's with his his wife, but his girlfriend at the time. And I was looking closely and they look really dapper, but his shoes have holes in them, you know? Right? <laughs> so so it's like, you know, there's there's great showmanship there. But the reality of it is, is you know, you probably didn't have a pot to piss in. So it's like, but you've got your you've got your uh your tucks on and holes in your shoes. So exactly. but yeah. Oh. We don't have those photos anymore, you know? Um, well, I want to thank you so much for sharing the Great Marais with us. Um, your object has been submitted to our museum, and we see it, and we appreciate it. And thank you so much, Nee, for coming on today. Thank you. All right. Take care. You. That's it, everyone. We've seen five experts sharing their five objects, and some even more, and telling us their five stories. Thank you so much for joining us.
for what's on your walls today. And as each expert has shared these artifacts and stories, we have welcomed them into our collection. And this collection of items won't ever be together in physical space, will only ever exist in this digital space that we've created. And even here, they'll only exist together, as you're seeing, for a few more moments. Because when the museum closes, they'll never be displayed together again. And this museum will close for good. So taking a final moment to see, to witness, to thank each and every one of our experts, each and every one of you that has commented and shared with us your items, each and every one of you that is witnessing wherever you are in whatever time zone and whatever land that you're currently occupying. Thank you for letting me into your home, for sharing some of yourself with us and for indulging and indulging in my nosiness. We see you, we appreciate you, and I thank you so much for sharing. Have a lovely, lovely day, everybody. Bye-bye. Hi, folks. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Rex Darty. I'm the Artistic Director of Theater Programming here at Solus Nua, and I am thrilled you joined us for What's on Your Walls, a brand new storytelling event uh, co-created with John King, Timodayo M.A., Rebecca Walls, and myself. Uh, I want to say a special thank you to uh, those participants who shared their objects with us. Uh, it was so delightful and amazing to hear the stories behind all of, all of those objects. Uh, thank you for sharing that. It was really special. Um, I want to shout out two um, events that are coming up with Solos Nua next. One in our film series, Irish Popcorn, we have um, December 16th coming up in just a three days, The Crest, a new documentary film. Hope you can check that out. It's really fascinating. And then um, in January, on uh, January 10th, we have Solus Nua's first ever radio drama. This is a brand new partnership with RTE, Drama on One. We will be having a listening party for Stephen Jones's Northern Lights, which was a uh, Best New Play nomination for the Irish Times Awards in 2019. Stephen is also the recipient of the Phil and Donlan uh, writing award, um, and we're just thrilled to uh, share this radio drama with you on January 10th. Um, at three o'clock, we'll, we'll all listen uh, to the radio drama, and then right after the show, we will have Stephen and myself in a post-show discussion, um, so you can join in, ask your own questions of Stephen, um, and uh, hopefully you can join us for that. Both events are on our website, solusnua.org. Hope you check that out. And then um, finally, I just want to say as, as 2020 draws to a close, it has been a year and it has been all the things that 2020 has been. But if you found yourself engaging with art and storytelling, and like Neve said, the art of conversation today in, in a meaningful, new, hopefully fresh way, um, or an old way that just, um, that, that uh, spurred you, inspired you, if you found yourself inspired by stories today, I hope you'll consider a tax deductible donation to Solus Nua at the year end. Um, you can make those donations online at solusnua.org and find out all that information there. Please help us support our 2021 programming as we dive into the new year um, with our brand new interim executive director, Miranda Driscoll, who is putting together, uh, along with myself, a, an incredible new program of, of work to bring to you. Hope you can check it out. We'll have a lot of digital work, um, and we'll also have some live, outdoor, socially distant um, and safe things for you to attend if you are here in the DC area. Um, and that's it from me, other than to say thanks again, everybody, uh, from all of us at Solus Nua to all of you at home, uh, wherever you are, inside of your walls. Um, thank you so much, and happy holidays. Bye-bye, folks.